Greetings. This is Greg. Uh, I usually post my Tesla videos on Tesla Fan Insight, which I may do uh, in this case as well. But I'm doing kind of an experiment of posting some truck information on my regular site just to get a flavor for the difference in audience and impact. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight as well as Greg Crossfield. Today's talk focuses on the Mercedes-Benz and Tesla truck partnership and how things are going to look when we come out in September. Bonjour, wie geht's, wie steht's doch immer aus zwei Beinen, drei Spiegel, nie hau ma. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Um, I've been waiting or eager to do a talk focused on uh, what, what's going on between Mercedes and Tesla when it comes to trucks. Um, so my strategy today is number one, I wanted to review sort of what we've covered already in the last few months. Number two, I wanted to uh, go ahead and review um, what I think is going to happen and what I see occurring soon. And then number three, I wanted to sort of play around with some of the revenue implications of all this. So first of all, I wanted to look at the fact that there's been an information embargo when it comes to the relationship between Tesla and Mercedes over the last, let's say, year and a half or two, particularly when it comes to trucks. Now prior to this, back in 2010, there was an article that was written that along with Mercedes putting in $50 million to support, uh, to get equity and support what Tesla was doing, senior managers of Mercedes had determined that Tesla has technology that nobody else has, hence the investment that was made in them. Fast forward to, and, and as the Mercedes executive in the U.S. made the decision, um, European Mercedes headquarters basically said that Tesla has technology when it comes to batteries that nobody else has. So we fast forward, let's say, a year and a half into around 2013, and Tesla uh, was engaged by Mercedes to help build um, the battery and drivetrain for the B-Class Mercedes. So Tesla provided an 80-mile battery along with, I thought it was just a battery um, and the engine ma and the, the management system, but it turns out the entire drivetrain was also provided. This is kind of big because if you look at current video available, on the Mercedes e-trucks that are being tested in Europe, you'll notice that the heads-up display looks a lot like a Model X. And in my mind, I was thinking, forget it, they'll just do, um, Mercedes is trying to back their way into taking over the whole vehicle, so they'll probably simply have uh, the batteries come from Tesla because they don't make batteries appropriate for that circumstance and be done with it. But um, based on how the B-Class was handled, I'm pretty confident that Mercedes elected to um, not only get batteries, but also get the drivetrain from Tesla because there's an efficiency of balancing between the two that comes up that can actually influence the success, particularly if you have a set of batteries that has to be interfacing with superchargers, you know, having the whole system from one place that's been carefully tested is a better deal but in terms of the future one could see Mercedes really working to both reverse engineer and build their entire system all the way back eventually in the next five or ten years to building their own batteries but we're not there yet. So that's sort of what's blatantly available you can just pull it up on YouTube I'll go ahead and um, do some links that are above that you'll see as we go through this. So the middle part of my discussion is kind of where are we right now and then we'll jump into the future and implications of that. So we're 30 days from the announcement on the, M the semi by Tesla. I think this is huge news because obviously we're going to see what it is that um, Elon Musk has been working on and who's, who's their partner going to be. Um, the fascinating thing that I thought and the reason why I wanted to bring this back up is the fact that what it looks like is going to happen is Mercedes is going to have to admit that their partner is Tesla on getting this semi-truck done and vice versa. 
Um, I think Tesla is in the power position because there are a lot of steps that are required to be able to get to a 500 mile vehicle that can tow, you know, call it 50,000 pounds worth of goods over that, that run and at the cost of, of uh, electricity rather than a diesel, both the raw costs as well as things like pollution. So what I'm fascinated by here is that as we've gotten closer to big money being attached to what Tesla and Mercedes are doing, neither side wants to say anything because there's a huge amount of uh, money that's involved in any statement by th that might be made by either side. So it's kind of interesting to watch how this is developing. Now let's jump into what I call the third portion of this. So I've been doing a lot of studying and reading to, to try to understand how, what's going to happen with this semi-truck solution. Um, Elon Musk's comments about it is that it's going to, the semi is going to use three or four Model 3 components and you can swap Model 3 for, uh, for the truck components readily, but it'll take three or four Model 3 engines. From everything I've read, the cost in battery packs is going to be somewhere between, let's say, nine battery packs that would go into a Model 3, you know, the longer range, and 20 battery packs. It's going to be somewhere in that neighborhood, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. What I was struck by was somebody's got to pay for those three or four Model 3 engines as well as those 10 sets of battery packs that would go into Model 3. And when you start adding up all these numbers and you put a 25% margin against that, um, Tesla's actually going to be making a nice block of cash from the uh, semi-truck iteration that they're discussing. And I think that um, for now, because the 2170 is the basis of this, the number of vehicles that are produced might be low. But if you start doing some calculations, let's say it's $10,000 um, per battery a pack, they're using 10 of them, that's 100K. Tesla has a 25% margin on that. That means they're making $25,000 per truck. And then you have let's say four Model 3 engines. Each of those engines, let's say, is three grand or so. So conceivably, kind of when you add up all the numbers, we're talking revenue to Tesla of being something like $120,000, $130,000 per truck with a 25% margin. So that's a nice block of revenue, potentially, that Tesla picks up in the truck implementation. I, when I went through these numbers, I was kind of surprised because I was expecting that um, it would be a money loser at a price point that would make it competitive with a, a regular truck, uh, a diesel truck. And so a regular diesel truck is about $120,000. But when we go to batteries, let's say Tesla is able to deliver a $150,000, $170,000 uh, vehicle. Um, and this thing is capable of going to 500,000 miles a year necessary to be competitive in that space. I think everything lines up uh, quite well for Tesla. 50% more cost for a battery uh, driven truck is not that great. The turnaround time to pay that off is two, two and a half years because of the savings on maintenance combined with the fuel savings. And so everything in the truck space is golden for Tesla. The only question is who's the partner going to be to help them to get uh, deliver this solution to the market. My answer is I believe it's going to be Mercedes, but there's a game of cat and mouse going on here because Mercedes doesn't want to reveal uh, how they're getting this done currently because in the future I think they're going to reverse engineer and do as much of the build themselves as possible because I think where we're at right now is you're going to have a beautiful five or ten grand hood or on from Mercedes on top of uh, a Tesla engine and sets of batteries, um, you know, and autopilot. So bottom line is that there's very little engineering for Mercedes to do there because Tesla has done the engine and the battery and it's just a matter of um, 
test uh, Mercedes doing their role of the vehicle into their showrooms around the world or out to their customer base to get this done. So this, you know, I like to do a once a week or so review of where we are on trucks. And I think the major ad that this represents is sort of a, a walkthrough of the information attitude change that's gone on between Tesla and Mercedes, number one. And then number two, the fact that there's value in having the same company that's building battery and battery management system and how that hooks into the drivetrain. And uh, Tesla has been doing this as part of the evolution of the relationship with Mercedes. And I'm pretty confident that we'll see a continuation of this in the truck uh, space until Mercedes finally is able to get enough capacity to build all those uh, components to sort of get rid of Tesla. Look forward to your comments and input. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Um, I'm looking forward to these trucks and finding out whether or not we can uh, see a huge reduction in uh, pollution driven by a reduction in our diesel footprint. Um, it'll be, I think, hard pressed on the front end because there's not enough battery capacity, but I think this is a real gonna happen situation. Tschüss, macht's gut, au revoir tout à l'heure. Please like and subscribe either to Tesla Fan Insight or to this site. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.